The year 2003 found a new government in place. This government was keen on change, overwhelmed with ideas and needed direction to make a turnaround. There were a myriad of organizations all claiming to be the voice of the private sector, several times contradicting each other with short-term solutions. In 2002, after the MAC government came in, they asked the question because, again, Different organizations went and said, no, we are the voice of the business community. It was ridiculous. We would all walk into the president. When we see the president, or, you know, we all go with very many mundane lists of things. There was indecision in government because of that. You get a view saying do X, somebody says do the other side, do the opposite. And therefore, there was no unification of voices. I saw the government turned around and said, listen, who is the voice of the business community? We want one voice. And uh, they said, um, <clears throat> we'd like you to create an umbrella body of all the commercial and business associations of the country. So they came in uh, after I settled in office and paid a courtesy call on me as the speaker. And we discussed a number of uh, issues of common interest. There is no business that can operate in the absence of a good partnership with government. And that's what really motivated the private sector to be very proactively involved. The defining moment was the Mombasa meeting between the government people and private sector leaders uh, to discuss the economic recovery strategy. We had to do a lot of work to convince various leaders who headed various associations and uh, large federations within the sectors to agree come together. Through that process, we were able to assemble all the leaders and we were able to agree that KEPSA will be the unified body of the business community. This was an interesting time for the business community because since independence it had been that government was the leader and all-round authority on all matters to do with economy, education, healthcare, infrastructure, energy, technology and so on. Professor Anyang Nyongo also played a very positive role in ensuring that the partnership thrived. The, the first three years, I would say, were extremely exciting, I must say. I think uh, you remember those were the heydays of Kenya's very, very optimistic times after the tremendous support of the uh, government. Uh, and Kenya was rated one of the happiest nations on earth. And that had a very positive impact on the on the spirit and engagement of the private sector. We do two things mainly. One is really to develop the partnership between government and private sector through the what we call the public-private dialogue platforms. Secondly, we also get involved in investments, you know, encouraging investments into the country and investments outside the country and in investments around the country and the growth of investments so that the local companies and the foreign companies can also expand. By the same time, we can attract more investments into the country and into the region. Our membership is both corporates and the associations. And so we look at the different um, aspects, whether it's agriculture, energy, security, infrastructure. There are about 18. We mirror ourselves with what government is doing, the different sectors of the economy. I would say since CAPSA was formed, we never looked back. It has been very effective. And it has really supported the government in uh, shaping and guiding the way forward. We created the round table with the, with the Prime Minister. We created the round table with the Speaker of the House. We created the round table with the Judiciary. That means at every place there are problems. And every place we need to straighten it out. From 2003, the prior government policy was based on what was called PRSP, that is Poverty Reduction Strategy Paper. And uh, jointly, government and private sector, when we came into the committee where I was a member representing KEPSA, we found that the mindset and the philosophy we needed to bring to Kenyans was not about poverty reduction. It was about growth. It's about employment and wealth creation. And therefore, we changed the terminology and it now became Economic Recovery Strategy, which is ERS, for employment and wealth creation. And it is motivating when you tell people the strategy is about creating wealth. It picked very well, it became government policy for the next five years. 
during this period, the economy maintained a rapid growth of 7% compared to negative growth in 2002. Based on the success of the ERS, the government started developing a new strategic long-term plan. In June 2008, the government launched Vision 2030. The long-term goals of this vision are to create a prosperous and globally competitive nation with a high quality of life by the year 2030. To do this, it aims to transform Kenyan industry all the while creating a clean and secure environment. We brought views from the private sector, views from government, views from the development partners, views from the civil society and came up with a shared vision for Kenya. How would Kenya look in 20, 2030? I think when we talk about Vision 2030 being the um, flagship for our country's economic growth, political and um, social pillars, I think the issue is some of the gains you don't see. Because when you lobby and when you make the environment better, people don't appreciate it, people don't see it. But they live it, they feel it. Right now there's a huge amount of optimism around the country in counties, in doing various things in counties. And I think there's a lot of optimism being shown by business people, private in, people in NGOs, and people saying, let's work together. The whole public-private partnership mode is beginning to look good. With the many sectors that have grown the economy, agriculture remains key. Over the past 10 years, agriculture has witnessed tremendous growth and penetration to new markets. The sector has improved significantly. We have a lot of organization of the marketing of the products, uh, removal or other moderation of the barriers, uh, and uh, also customization of our own, you know, alignment of our own farmers to be able to produce to the external market, especially the European market. The introduction of Europe Cup as one of the measures of entry to the market led to the formulation of the Kenyan Cup, which has better standards than Europe Cup which means, therefore, our products have better market access. We also have had a lot of supermarket chains development as a result of uh, uh, increased demand for organized market systems. One thing we must be sure, and we all know, is that the livelihoods of Kenyans depends on agriculture. And we are talking of agribusiness, not just agriculture. Moving from agriculture to agribusiness, there's a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm sure that through uh, our relationship with KEPSA, we are going to be there. We are going to ensure that Kenyans' population are able to develop economically, just like it has been uh, put in the Vision 2030, we'll be able to attain our economic goals through the development of the agribusiness. The industry has undergone very fundamental changes in the past 12 years. The sector was quite controlled, but that changed. We had to get the internet gateway uh, through what was called Jambonet, uh, which was um, managed by Telcom Kenya at that time. That changed. The sector was liberalized and that monopoly was lifted. Uh, that helped us to manage our solutions end to end. Then, of course, the major one was the coming of the undersea uh, fiber optic cables. Uh, the government spearheaded that process and um, uh, partnered with the private sector to ensure that the team's cable eventually came to the uh, coast of the town of Mombasa. And that has made a whole difference in the, in, in, in the industry. In 2003, there were less than 1 million mobile phones in Kenya. Today, there are about 30 million Kenyans using mobile phones, while the number of internet users rose from 250,000 to over 17 million currently. With new policies and a listening government, the business climate improved, attracting investors to various sectors of the economy. Uh, we put some money together with Vodafone, which is uh, Safaricom here, and we made the M-Pesa model um, sustainable. We put a small amount of money in, and of course the rest, as they say, is history. M-Pesa now has, I think, 60% of GDP going through it. You know, Kenya is a big uh, driver of innovation. Things are done here, are done first, and then they're replicated and taken up by others, other countries around the region. And an organisation like KEPSA 
can really push for that and can be making sure its members um, drive that innovation forward in the country and around the region. In 2002, the country had eight TV stations and eight FM radio stations. From this handful of broadcasters, Kenya expanded to 19 TV stations and over 80 radio stations through licenses issued to the interested investors in the industry. This led to the creation of job opportunities and a more informed population. We had uh, a media bill that was not that was not serving the interests of not just the media, but also Kenyans. And uh, what we did is to work with Kepsa. They did their bit in terms of lobbying. First of all, the first thing Kepsa does, which is great, is they just don't take something and run with it. They, they get the sector to justify why Kepsa should be involved, why it is in public interest, why it is in that, that sector's interest, that they get involved. In 2007, they did see the point. They got involved. They helped us to lobby and led to the creation of the 2007 Media Act, which is what is operational until today. Another key area where KEPSA has actually catalyzed is the building of industries which support the larger population, the medium and small enterprises SME sector, by pushing for policies that have made it easier for smaller players to access the larger market. Without a regulatory framework, the MSC sector used to operate like a, like a plane without a pilot. There used to be a lot of duplication. You remember the issues of the MSC sector used to be handled by more than five ministries. You remember the popular battles that you used to see with the hawkers, small business traders running around with city council. You remember the way the work sites were being destroyed every day and so on. In the coming into law of the MSC Act 2012, now there is a one-stop shop called the MSC Authority, where all the issues and all the departments that used to tackle issues to do with small businesses were brought together. One of the greatest changes that KEPSA have really brought into this sector is to seeing a bill that was there for 10 years coming in to pass. Now we have an act of uh, parliament that is actually foreseeing the sector growing because we have to be rearranged in four subsectors. We have the agro base, we have the manufacturers, we have trade, and we have the service providers. The four subsectors will bring sanity in the MSCs because the bill says. Before 2003, it was indeed difficult to set up a business. The government had many prerequisite requirements that were not clear and hefty penalties for those who flouted them. Harmonizing and simplifying licenses promoted trade in all industries. Previously, in the 90s, it was impossible to know which licenses you need. And, and you go to any business, you would find a whole wall full of licenses covering anything and everything you could think of and all of which you had to have in place before you could start to do business or else you would risk being in breach of the law. Nowadays, I know a lot of the councils claim that they've, only, they've got a single business permit. It's not entirely true, but the number of, of licenses and permits has come down considerably. We have seen where a partnership between government and private sector comes in very handy. Um, a case in point is the Kenya Youth Empowerment Program that has a training component focusing on uh, core business skills, which looks at actually how to train young people on the basic skills they need to start and run their business. The Kenya Youth Empowerment Project, running from 2011 to 2014, whose overall goal is to improve youth employability in Kenya. Its first cycle of six months proved to be successful. As of October 2012, 71% of the youths who enrolled into the program were either in wage employment or self-employed. I was employed. For a while, I found that the job could, couldn't sustain my life. So it was like hustling, not getting anything. One day, I got an antipart from KEPSA, Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Actually, I applied. I was called for the internship. I went through the internship for a period of six months successfully. Then, before I finished the internship, I was already in business. Since there was one thing I was lacking, and that was the self skills. And so, I got the skills of business from them. 
KFC is the best thing that has ever happened to this country. Because um, as much as we have the government that runs the show, we, we need the private sector because it's a private sector that creates the wealth that, that the, the government then collects uh, taxes and is able to run their programs and is able to do everything else. And the fact that KEPSA has come in and has been able to organize the way the private sector uh, engages government, the way the pri private sector conducts its uh, issues and affairs, that has made a lot. And the other thing that I, I want to really celebrate, especially now that KEPSA is ten, turning 10, is the fact that they've actually provided an avenue for everyone. It's not just the way business was before, that it was uh, a private members club for the rich people or the guys who have the money. I mean, people like us who are representing the youth also have a chance to be able to sit on the same table and be able to air our issues. Because as much as, uh, as, much as whatever the business that we are doing are small, when put together, then when consolidated, it's actually a lot of money that, that we are talking about. There's been a dramatic shift in the dynamics in the finance sector over the last 10 years. You found that the financial services sector was dominated by three or four foreign banks. Uh, the second issue, problem was that uh, the local banks were, had huge mountains of bad, non-performing loans. And the third is that technology had not yet become prominent. So if you fast forward to today, you'll find that the biggest banks in Kenya now are local banks. You'll find that the quality of the loans in the, in the sector has improved dramatically. And then today, technology is actually driving banking. So now you can transact from any branch. In fact, you don't need even to go to a branch. You can use a mobile phone, you can use an ATM, you can use the internet. So there's been a real shift in the way the financial services sector has operated in the last 10 years. We have a lot to be proud about as a country in terms of uh, the economic development uh, trajectory uh, we have achieved. The time uh, the institution was formed, Kenya was going through uh, a political uh, transition. The economy was growing, but it wasn't growing at a pace uh, which uh, most uh, people in business uh, were basically happy with. 2002, we are talking of government budget in the billions at about three to 400 uh, billion shillings. 2013, look forward 10 years, you are talking about uh, a budget in a trillion shillings, in excess of 1.5 uh, trillion shillings. That doesn't happen if there's no consistent uh, economic uh, development. With the policies put in place, the economy maintained a rapid growth between 2005 and 2007 of 7% compared to negative growth in 2002. Due to disruption caused by the post-election violence, the economy slumped in 2007-2008. In the run-up to 2013 election,